Hello, everyone, and welcome to this virtual event. Um, my name is Ruthi Manhui, and I'm the Managing Director for Techstars here in Singapore. For those of you who don't know a great deal about Techstars, um, we've invested in close to 2,000 tech startups uh, from around the world. Uh, we're present in many countries globally, including, of course, right here in Singapore. Now, the maritime sector is one of the world's oldest and largest industries. 90% of whatever we eat or wear has been transported by ships across oceans and bought to you. Uh, naturally, given the size of the sector, which makes hundreds of billions of dollars every year and features close to a trillion dollars worth of assets floating on oceans across the world, we feel it is inevitable that multiple startups, multiple billion dollar startups will emerge over the next decade, selling both software and hardware to the sector. The EPS Techstars partnership was set up specifically to invest in and help build these startups. Over the next hour or so, you will see several of the investments that we've made during our first year in this partnership. A partner in this journey has been Eastern Pacific Shipping or EPS. When one is trying to build maritime startups from the ground up, what one really wishes for is a partner who is a trusted brand, is a large, well-established company, and is far-sighted as well as supportive. And EPS has ticked all of these boxes comprehensively. With that, I'd like to hand over to Gil Ofer uh, from EPS, who will tell you a little bit more about his company and their motivations for being part of this partnership. Thanks, Jordan. Hi, everyone. My name is Gil Ofer, and I'm the third generation owner and head of open innovation in Eastern Pacific Shipping. With a history spanning 60 years, the last 30 of which in Singapore, EPS has become one of the largest fully integrated shipping companies in the world, with a headcount of 5,000 and a fleet size of over 14 million deadweight tons across eight sectors. While all of us were surely looking forward to attending this event in person, it was crucial to put our collective health and safety first. I nevertheless want to express my gratitude to those who are tuning in from around the world. I'd also like to thank our partners at Techstars and, of course, the founders who, within such short notice, were able to pivot and produce this awesome virtual demo day. The journey began over a year and a half ago when I moved to Singapore to join the family business, and within a few days came to the realization that it's not just EPS that was lagging behind in terms of technology and innovation, but the commercial maritime industry as a whole. How can it be that our counterparts in the avi aviation industry, for example, use sensors to improve the safety and efficiency of aircrafts while diagnosing their health in real time, while most, if not all of us in maritime, are still relying on a data sheet prepared manually by ship staff on a once a day basis. And that is only one of many more examples. From then on, I decided that whatever innovation route we would take at EPS will be one that is collaborative in nature, which might seem unconventional in an insular industry known for its skepticism. Luckily, I came across Techstars, whose mentor-driven approach and give-first mantra really resonated with me. And I'm proud to say that our inaugural cohort of startups met with not only most of our internal subject matter experts at EPS, but also over 160 mentors from outside of EPS. Friends, competitors, suppliers, clients, investors, and more, who all helped the teams get to where they are today. With that, I leave you to sit back and enjoy the following pitches. Hi everyone! Drones have become commonplace amongst consumers and are making their way into delivering small parcels to people. Today's drones, however, are limited to only sending small loads over short distances. We at F Drones think bigger. We see a potential for unmanned aerial systems to transform the world of industrial logistics. Every year, Supply boats and helicopters make more than 2.5 million trips to deliver supplies to ships and offshore platforms. These deliveries are expensive, require so much manpower, 
and they produce more than 100 million tons of CO2 a year. That's the amount of CO2 that Indonesia as a country produces. A typical boat delivery to a ship 20 kilometers away would take more than two hours, cost more than $2,000, and emit 100 kilograms of CO2. Imagine if a drone can halve this time and cost and reduce emissions to zero. Drones have the potential to do so, but are not yet good enough. Offshore rigs can be more than 50 kilometers away, while landing a drone on a rocking ship at sea is no small feat. Today, F Drones brings the future of maritime delivery drones. Our proprietary drones will deliver 100 kilogram loads over 100 kilometers and help save 80% of the cost, time, and manpower. The delivery I mentioned earlier can be reduced to just 15 minutes, be 80% cheaper, and produce zero emission. Our fully electric and autonomous drone takes off like a helicopter, rotates itself to fly like a plane with its wings, and lands vertically at high accuracies using computer vision. And I stress again that this is a proprietary aircraft. No one in the world has built such a drone before. My co-founder, Yeshwant, previously co-founded India's first ever commercial drone company. He has designed, built, and operated various types of autonomous drones over six years, including one of the very few drones in the world that has obtained certification. I'm Nicholas. I spent 10 years bringing foreign investments into Singapore from aerospace, marine and offshore, and resources companies, our key target market. We are joined by Pradumna, who was at NASA, and Vanga, previously a drone pilot for the Singapore Air Force. This is not something we need to wait another five years for. It is already happening. We have built and flown multiple scaled-down prototypes. The development of our final product will be completed next year. And today, we are unveiling a smaller version of our final product, capable of delivering 5 kilogram loads over 50 kilometers. It has a wingspan of 2.2 meters, and we are calling it the Hyperlaunch, the world's first large-scale transition drone built for the maritime sector. We are also fortunate to have the support of the Maritime Port Authority and Aviation Authority of Singapore, and are now the only company in Singapore with permission for drone deliveries to this whole area south of Marina Bay. We have since started test deliveries with an off-the-shelf drone with companies such as Eastern Pacific Shipping and Shooter Group, which are amongst the world's largest ship managers. EPS is also our first paying customer. We are also glad to be backed by GAG, which is one of the world's largest ship agents. They are in the business of sending supplies to vessels and are planning to start test deliveries together. Marine and offshore is our focus now, but companies from other sectors have also shown interest. In fact, we are in advanced negotiations with one of the world's largest mining companies for paid test deliveries of spare parts between their remote mines and warehouses in Australia. Other adjacent sectors include sending agriculture equipment parts, serving onshore rigs, and in search and rescue applications. With all these in mind, we are confident of becoming a company with revenues of more than $200 million. Drone deliveries are happening globally. Last year, UPS obtained approval to start a nationwide drone delivery airline in the US. In Spain, a Volkswagen company started drone deliveries of auto parts to their production line. And DHL started regular drone deliveries in China. F-Drones, 100 kilograms over 100 kilometers will take these to a different level and change the way supplies are being sent across oceans and remote locations. Thank you. Hi, I'm Matt Heider, CEO of Nautilus Labs. We're a technology company based in New York and Singapore, and we're focused on advancing the efficiency of ocean commerce. Every day, 
ocean shipping consumes as much fuel as Tesla vehicles have saved in the entire history of that company's life. This leads to a massive opportunity for operational efficiency improvements, reduced fuel consumption, and minimizing the greenhouse gases that are emitted from ocean commerce every single day. The way that we do that is by looking at the decision-making process across a fleet for a voyage and for a ship. And what we see today is so much decision-making is driven with noon-based data analysis. The challenge is that introduces roughly 20% error into every decision that's made and has a compounding effect over the course of a voyage and a vessel's practical life. In order to solve this, we built a modern integrated SaaS platform that's available to any user anywhere in the world at any time so that they can take a better action for an outcome determined by the business and the opportunities in front of them. What this looks like at its highest level is the KPI dashboard that's accessible and helps to drive operational efficiency improvements across shipping organization for shoreside teams and for crews. What this does is eliminate the foundation and root cause of a lot of fuel waste that occurs in the industry. At a broad level, what we believe this is, is a limited transparency into the actual performance of a voyage in a ship at any given point in time. Similarly, there's a lack of accountability over expected outcomes for shipping companies and their businesses. And ultimately, there's limited collaboration between shoreside teams and between shoreside teams and crews. An obvious example of, of an opportunity that one might see is the ability to be alerted to efficiency improvements such as configuring generators in an optimal way. Every shipping company we've talked to has spoken about how they know that their generators aren't necessarily always configured optimally, and yet it's difficult without data and a tool to change that. For one of our largest clients, what we've seen is on a set of their ships, this can produce $250,000 in savings, both in fuel and in OPEX per ship per year. This is the type of massive efficiency improvement that exists for every ship and every company that exists in the world, and which needs to be enabled by better technology to support people making better decisions. An even more advanced component of our functionality is smart voyage optimization where we take into account all the parameters that are impacting the outcomes for a voyage and help to determine what the optimal recommendation is for the operation of the vessel to achieve that outcome, whether it's an ETA or a profit target for a voyage. What the net result is, is an RPM or power or speed instruction that the crew can take and use in order to op optimize and achieve that outcome. What we've seen for some of our clients, particularly in the bulk space, is that this can produce tens of thousands of dollars of additional profit per voyage. Rather than using a basic assumption about the ship's performance, and rather than not really taking into account the commercial parameters that the vessel is operating in, now in real time, dynamically, the, the shoreside team and the crews are able to collaborate around an optimal instruction to achieve either the ETA or the TCE. We do this by interoperating with any hardware or software provider in the industry. We are a strong advocate for open ecosystems, and we believe that by working together and with all of the businesses you see on the screen, we can help to deliver more, better, stronger results for the industry and drive, drive down greenhouse gas emissions. What our approach has led to us so far is the ability to expand globally at a really accelerated pace. Today, we have over 200 chips committed to our platform. Between our clients and the folks we're talking to, uh, in our sales pipeline, we have roughly 5% of the world fleet potentially to bring onto NOS platform in the next couple of years. We believe our industry is global, our company is global, and our goal is to build towards a carbon-free future for shipping. That in itself is a global goal focused on building a better, more sustainable world and doing it by arming our companies and our clients with more efficient opportunities to achieve better results for themselves and their shareholders every day. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Look forward to working with you in the future. Please just let me know if you have any questions. Hi, this is Inder and I'm the founder at Enelmo Technology. 
Now, one of the most significant inventions of medical history is the electrocardiogram or popularly known as the ECG. William Mithoven in 1924 was awarded the Nobel Prize for this invention. Let us see how an ECG works. The ECG measures the electrical activity of the heart and represents it in a graph which is then visualized on an ECG monitor or a paper chart recorder. Based on the nature of the graph, different problems are identified. Doctors use this information to assess various cardiac related issues. Now the ECG is a fantastic business opportunity. It has potentially 7.8 billion people who can be benefited from the ECG. Similarly, there's another great market opportunity for the ECG of machinery because there are $50 trillion worth machinery which requires continuous monitoring. And this is best solved by the ECG of machinery. We at Enermo are building that. Now inspired by the ECG invention, we at Enermo have built a device which is the ECG for machinery. Now our device measures the electrical signature of a machinery and assess its condition and predicts faults at a very early stage. Now from the left hand side of the slide you can see our device is installed on the switchboard and on the right side is an electrical signature analysis of that machinery which is a lot like the ECG. What makes the ECG so revolutionary is that you don't have to insert tubes in the body the readings are continuous and accurate and the best part is you don't land up with expensive hospital bills. Hence, for a condition monitoring solution to be effective and valuable, it needs to fulfill the three criteria. Firstly, it should be non-invasive, which means installation should be easy and it should not tamper with the machinery itself. Second, the readings should be accurate. The signals should not be distorted by external factors or adjacent machinery. And third, it should be affordable it should have a higher cost to quality ratio. Now, among the competing technologies such as vibration, acoustics, oil analysis or thermal imaging, Enermo's electrical signature analysis takes all of these checkboxes. In this slide, you can see that Enermo sensors are clamp type wrapped around the wire, which is non-invasive and very easy to install. Whereas for the same machinery, a vibration or acoustic sensor you would need to disassemble the machinery and then install the sensor. One of the exciting things at Enermo we are seeing is that we are getting traction from several segments and each of these segments are like a multi-billion dollar opportunity for us. For example, shipping is a trillion dollar industry. Oil and gas is a 17 trillion dollar industry. Similarly with energy and railway which is also a multi-trillion dollar industries. In less than one year, we have gained significant traction from all these four segments. All these segments collectively provide us with a $12 billion market opportunity. Enermo was established in January 2019. By April 2019, we had our minimum viable product in the market. In the last six months, we focused on pilot projects primarily in the maritime sector. However, we have gained several traction from other industries such as the power plant as well as steam mills. In 2020, January, we started a Singapore entity with the focus for marketing our product. We are due for release of our second generation of meters by March 2020. Some of our pilot projects have been with customers such as Diamond Air Shipping and Eastern Pacific Shipping. We have also gauged a lot of interest from different segments such as the drilling industry as well as the locomotives. We are discussing pilot opportunities. We have a global reach with our customers worldwide. Some of the recent installations we have done are in United States, Denmark, India and Singapore. Now at NRMO, we are simplifying condition monitoring for heavy asset industries. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dan, and I'm the CEO of CyberOwl. In 2017, Maersk, one of the world's largest maritime companies, was cyber attacked. The attack grounded the business to a halt. 
It took 600 people 10 solid days just to reinstall the core systems, and then months thereafter to fully recover. Musk sustained losses of around 300 million US dollars as a result of this cyber attack. This is not an isolated cyber incident in the maritime sector. Costco, Clarkson's, and just a few weeks ago, Tor Group, all were cyber attacked. Because the truth is, shipping is an easy, lucrative target for a cyber attacker. And that is why the IMO have put in place global regulations for all commercial shipping operators to implement a cyber risk management system by 1st of January 2021. Fail to put such a system in place, you suffer the risk of your vessels getting taken out of operations. But why are we seeing an increase in cyber attacks and shipping? Well, firstly, it's a huge market. There are 90,000 vessels to target, and these move about 90% of global goods. Secondly, connectivity and digitalization is creating vulnerabilities that shipping has never faced before. Onboard systems today now combine information technology, so this is computers, network infrastructure, applications, with operational technology, things that pump, turn, heat up, inject chemicals. This internet of maritime things is commonly retrofitted onto legacy assets that were not designed to be connected to the internet. And finally, shipping operators have small IT teams typically, and they are constantly maxed out. So at CyberIsle, we've developed a cybersecurity analytics platform that helps shipping companies overcome these specific cybersecurity challenges. And we do this through two technologies. Incus is our edge processor. It is installed into vessels, either as an appliance or a virtual machine. It is optimized for remote assets, so it can handle patchy connectivity and limited bandwidth. Incus monitors onboard machine behavior, as well as network communications between these machines to look for early signs of cyber attack activity using advanced behavioral analysis and machine learning techniques. Incus is designed to be extensible, so it can be programmed to monitor not just vessel IT, but also extend it to IoT and OT systems on board the vessel. Medulla is our cloud-based analytics portal. Operators have provided early warning of both known and unknown attack techniques. They also provided with a better understanding of whether the crew are complying with cyber policies. And we all know that usage abuse or policy abuse can easily be exploited as a starting point for cyber attack. Together, Incus and Medulla provide the fleet operator with a very, very simple and easy to understand way to identify what the cyber risks are across their fleet, prioritize when to take action and when it can wait because it is low risk, and automate reporting to comply with IMO regulations and the inspections and vetting processes. Incus and Medulla go beyond perimeter defenses, firewalls, email filters. These are like city walls. They're hard to maintain and easy to bypass. Our systems are more like CCTV systems. They monitor the streets, identify shady creatures that lurk in dark corners, observes who climbs into your roof so that you can take preventative action. And these problems aren't just exclusive to the maritime sector. These are common problems across renewables, gas distribution, space systems. All of these are rapidly growing sectors with remote, highly distributed systems that are embracing digitalization. And CyberIsle is well positioned to serve them all. The founding team combines decades of experience in cybersecurity research, developing advanced, scalable, but also workable technology, and building businesses up from scratch. CyberIsle is a product of the exclusive GCHQ Cyber Accelerator program in the UK, one of the only programs globally that is run by a world leading national cybersecurity agency. We were shortlisted for the prestigious Lloyd's Science of Risk Prize and have won a series of prizes ever since. Our technology has been selected for trials and systems with the UK Ministry of Defence. We work with critical national infrastructure in the UK and commercial shipping companies in Europe and Singapore. We believe our system can change the way ship operators manage their cyber risks. To find out more, 
please get in touch with us. Thank you. Hi folks, my name is Kaushik and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Quantship. This is a picture of an 80s commodities trader. As you could see, he looks very stressed. There was a reason for this and that reason is volatility. What this volatility meant was one day he could be a winner, the very next day he could have lost it all. This is a picture of a modern day commodities trader. Computers and data have given him the tools to leverage that same volatility and make money for himself. That was the commodities market. Now let's move across to the shipping business. The spot market, which is one part of the shipping industry is worth over $150 billion. Like the commodities market, it's subject to a lot of volatility. What you see on the screen is one such example. On the graph, you will find the freight rates for a ship trading between Brazil and China. In just over a two week period, the rates have fluctuated wildly, gone up by as much as 33%, gone down 15%, gone up 26%, gone down again by 14%. Now that is really volatile. As we looked across different trades in the shipping business, we found similar patterns. If one could predict the market and earn 20% higher rate, that would mean that shipping companies can make 20% in higher revenue. That 20% revenue makes a significant impact on the bottom line because it's this top line is flowing straight to the bottom line and increases the profitability of shipping companies. Given the fact that about $150 billion of shipping business is affected by this volatility, one would imagine sophisticated tools would be put at the industry's disposal to solve this problem, correct? We do not think that's the case. And that is something we want to change at Quantship. We want to bring about the same tools which the modern day commodity traders use in their trades to make money for themselves. Those techniques are called quant techniques. And we at Quantship use the same quantitative techniques. In fact, that's the quant in Quantship. My co-founder Sudeep and I have over a decade experience working at a New York based quant hedge fund and in shipping respectively. We are now marrying these two worlds together. A machine learning software analyzes data points from satellite images, trade patterns, commodity prices, currency rates, and hundreds of other sources to forecast the freight rates. At this point of time, you might be wondering what our accuracy levels have been like. When we started our business, we started predicting in two very volatile trades. The first was Supramaxes in South Africa and China, and the second for Panamaxes in Australia and China. We already see an 80% accuracy over a two week forecast. Mind you, this is only the beginning our algorithms will get much more stronger as they ingest more amount of data. With our third customer, we found ourselves in a very interesting spot. Well, we were predicting the rates for Brazil and China. The rates in this corridor were falling steeply between January 1st to January 22nd. Rates really fell this low and our customer was wondering, would the rates stabilize from here or would they go down further? Every analyst in the market predicted that the rates would actually stabilize and we have hit the rock bottom. That was their prediction. You can see on the screen. We, on the other hand, predicted that the rates would go down a further 20%. This was an outlandish claim to make because what this meant was shipping companies would be operating well below their daily operating costs. And guess how the market moved? We were right. With results such as these, we have a very simple business model. We take a small slice of the additional profits that we generate for our clients. 
In fact, we already started doing that with one of our customers. Let's talk a bit about our traction in the limited time we have been in existence. We are dealing with three large shipping companies, including one of the largest and the most diversified ship owners in the world. We are active in three major dry bulk trade routes, and we have achieved an accuracy of over 80%. This is only the beginning, and we have set our eyes on the larger tanker trade, and we want to increase our monthly revenues significantly going forward. That's all for today, folks. Thanks a lot for listening to me. Please feel free to reach out to know more about the first quant hedge fund of shipping. Thank you and have a great day ahead. Greetings, everyone. My name is Surendra. I'm the co-founder of Volteo Maritime. Excited to share our vision to reimagine maritime operations. Recently, I've had an opportunity to sail with Chief Officer Hulev on his large tanker vessel. How large, you may ask? It's the size of an Eiffel Tower. Now picture the same filled with machinery and combustible fuel oil, floating in the middle of the ocean, being pounded by massive waves and winds. You see, shipping, while it's a very challenging industry, people like Chief Hulev deliver it safely because it's also one of the most disciplined and heavily regulated industries there is. In my journey with Chief Yulev, I asked him what gets in his way. He walked me around his office, filled with binders, papers, and documents on his desk, but he needed to fill every hour and said it takes 30% of his time daily to comply with regulation and regulatory related paperwork. After speaking to several others like Chief Yulev, we realized this is an industry-wide massive problem. Do you know what it costs for the shipping industry to comply with regulation every year? 100 million man hours and a billion sheets of paper. And when something does not get done or fall through cracks, millions of dollars in penalties for the shipping firms. So how is this paperwork getting generated? Take a look at this picture of an engine log. Engineers have to record critical information like temperatures, pressures of an engine room, speed of the ship, fuel consumption. These are recorded daily. Crew today have to fill 20 such logbooks, some every hour, and majority of the industry still uses handwritten logs. For every port visit or rough weather situation, crew today have to print it, fill it, and file it, about 1,500 or more checklists every year. Add to this are drills, audits, inspections, reports, and the paperwork keeps getting piled up. In order to ensure compliance, crew today tend to focus more on paperwork and less on work. We believe there is a better way to work. So we built Wayship. Wayship is a digital workspace for seafarers. With Wayship, Chief and his team get several handheld devices to significantly save time while reduce the risk of non-compliance. Think of it this way. Whatever they previously did on paper could now be done on Wayship. Let me show you how. Our first feature is helping the crew with ship's logs. For engine and deck logs, we worked with equipment makers to autofill the data every hour to reduce manual entries. For all others, crew can simply pick up the handheld devices to complete them directly. Our second feature is smart checklists. Remember the rough weather situation? This time around, crew does not have to remember which checklist to fill. Based on the log entries, Wayship will trigger the appropriate one automatically and make it mandatory to fill before the end of watch. This reduces the risk of non-compliance significantly. Since the crew use facial recognition to sign in and sign out, we know who they are and can keep track of their work rest hours, further reducing the burden of paperwork and compliance. Wouldn't it be nice to use the operational data on shore for decision making? Wayship Studio will help you with that in making this data accessible to multiple stakeholders, including operations, legal, charters, and relevant third parties. This is a significantly better way than how the competition handles it today. In this industry, flag state approvals required for software usage for electronic logs. Think of flag states as vessel registration authorities with compliance oversight. 
our software complies with Malta, Liberia, and Singapore digital and electronic law standards already. And we're excited to start our first commercial pilots with three large diverse shipping firms, two in Singapore and one in Greece, with a combined total fleet size of 250 ships, and are thrilled to see early results come through. That's not all. The problem of paperwork is not just limited to vessels alone. Bulk and liquid cargo ports around the world have similar challenges. Our second product addresses the same for the port industry. SmartPort is a digital workflow platform transforming the bulk cargo port industry from a fully manual to becoming 100% paperless ports. For a South Indian port last year, we cut down vessel processing times about 50% and help them become ISPS compliant. Smartport already generates $300,000 of revenue every year. My co-founder Anindya comes with about 20 years of experience in commercial sales for the maritime industry, whereas I have spent the last 20 years in technology products, and the last five specifically involved in digital transformation as the head of Asia for Volteo. We believe our complementary skills and passion to solve challenging problems will excite my maritime and investor friends. When we shared what we built with Chief Hewlett, he was ecstatic and is hopeful to see a future without paperwork. We wish to do the same for you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sachin, and I'm founder and CEO of Sara. Sara uses image recognition for supply chain automation. All of you recognize these logos. We all buy products from these folks, but what you probably don't think about is how complicated their warehouse operations are. This is inside of a typical warehouse. There are thousands and thousands of different products in those cartons. As you can see, things can get pretty messy and complicated in a warehouse. Every time one of those cartons arrives or leaves the warehouse, someone has to open the carton and count each and every item in it. This has to be done manually. That information is typically captured on a form and then later typed into an ERP system. This is also done manually. Other activities in the warehouse are also manual. For instance, every month an audit is done in the warehouse to check the exact inventory levels. This too is done manually. I emphasize all of this work where accuracy is essential is done manually. Work done manually naturally leads to errors. Even a small number like 0.5% can really, really add up. Take a company like Unilever. Unilever sells $50 billion worth of goods annually. Being off by even 1% means $500 million worth of inventory jeopardized. Take a company like Walmart, being off by even half a percent means $2 billion worth of inventory jeopardized. That's a lot of money that's stuck on your balance sheet or even worse, lost altogether. This is where Sara and its image recognition technology comes in. Now warehouse staff has an app on a simple smartphone that uses our technology to reduce manual error. Let me show you how. These people now simply click a picture of the carton using the Sara app and voila, Sara knows the exact product and the exact quantity, no room for manual error. There are multiple benefits. First, you reduce your error rates when it comes to inventory. It helps you free up cash on your balance sheet and reduce write-offs. Secondly, you save on labor cost because having digitized your warehouse operations. And thirdly, your handling of your inventory becomes a lot smarter since you know more about your products. This will look simple, but it's not. Lighting conditions, depth perception, and recognizing similar products are some of the challenges. Fortunately, we have taught our technology to adapt and recognize. Not easy, but we have done it. Inventory and warehousing is a problem for everyone. Let me give you a couple of more examples how we helped our customers save money. All of you are familiar with container ports, one of the world's top three container terminal player was one of our first few customers. They have more than 50 ports. That's tens of billions of dollars worth of equipment. At each port, they have a warehouse where they stock spares. 
They used the bird solution and found $40 million worth of lost inventory in one part alone. Let me repeat that, $40 million in inventory. Let me give you another case study, and this time from e-commerce sector. We work with one of the Asia's largest e-grocery company. We use our technology to automate their inventory checking and audit process. As a result, we improve their inventory availability by 3% and effort reduction in tracking by over 90%. We just talked about warehouses on the land, but there are more than 60,000 warehouses in the middle of the sea. Every ship has its own warehouse to store spares as supplies. We have run a trial with Eastern Pacific Shipping, one of the world's largest shipping companies, to help them reduce their onboard spares and supplies as well. Today, our customers come from different verticals, such as shipping, ports, FMCG, and e-commerce. Once we have addressed these sectors, we will also focus on other sectors, such as aviation, oil, and gas. They have a lot of similarities to the shipping businesses. As far as market size is concerned, there are over 400,000 warehouses all over the world. And that number is growing by 8% every year which means that number will double in next 10 to 12 years time. That represents a massive opportunity for us. We feel that we can target $100 million worth of revenue in medium terms. Last but not the least, our business model comes with all the advantages of a SaaS business and some perks. It has SaaS business margins, which is a plus. The contracts are multi-year, so revenue is recurring in nature. There is no churn at all in our earlier cohorts of customer. And this is a B2B business, so cost of acquisition is low. At the moment, there doesn't seem to be a lot of competition too. So all in all, signs are good. That's all I have from my end today. Join us on our supply chain digitization journey. Thank you. Hello, my name is Christina, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Sea Dog. 90% of all goods in the world are transported by sea, and this means that the clothes you're wearing now and the food you had for breakfast was most likely shipped across the world for you to consume. But did you also know that seafaring is considered one of the most dangerous professions on the planet? Right next to deep sea drilling, firefighting, and crocodile wrestling. Due to the dangerous environments that the seafarers work in, more than 20,000 accidents happen yearly. Out of these, 75% are related to human errors. Accidents are in many cases caused by lack of knowledge or inadequate training. The maritime industry's current solution to avoiding this is to make sure that each seafarer is certified to handle the risk at sea. This means that every seafarer has to obtain on average 25 certificates and keep physical copies of them on him whenever he's at sea. Now, having a certificate doesn't mean you're competent. Like everyone we know who has a driver license isn't necessarily a competent driver. Like this guy in the picture, he has a driver license, but it doesn't make him a competent and safe driver. The maritime industry constantly requires checking every seafarer's certificate to make sure that everyone is in compliance at all times. This means they have thousands of people spending millions of hours each year just checking seafarer's certificates manually. In SeaLog, we're building a platform that fixes these problems. Allow me to walk you through our platform. For the first part of the solution, we're digitizing all those certificates I just mentioned. We will save the industry thousands of headcounts by doing this. For the training centers and maritime authorities, we've developed a universal ID and next generation certificates that are cryptographically secure and easy to verify. Now, providing digital certificates, we get a lot of data on the seafarer, which allows us to provide for the second part of our solution, which is to take a seafarer from being compliant to competent. Now, taking a seafarer from just being compliant to competent has several parts to it. First, we're going to take his unique ID we just gave him and start tracking on his com uh, start tracking his competence level. The second part of this is to measure how well he's handling different aspects of his job. 
We do this by connecting data from different data sources, measuring aspects of engagement to how well he's performing in specific tasks. The third part of our solution is identifying the competency gap and making training accessible to the seafarer. We do this by using virtual tools like e-learning to make training much more accessible to a seafarer than going to a traditional training center. We now have a complete digital footprint of the seafarer. We now know how well he's performing on the job. We know what training he's attended. We know how well he performed during that training. And we know how he's carrying the impact of that training back to his job at the sea. Allow me to briefly touch upon the traction we've had. We already have a working MVP that allows our customers to verify the ID and certificates of a seafarer simply by connecting to his MID profile. We also have more than 250,000 users on our platform and a goal to reach half a million in 2020. We've also established partnerships with some of the world's largest shipping companies such as Eastern Pacific Shipping and BSM. By adding value to so many stakeholders in the maritime community, we're experiencing success onboarding seafarers onto our platform. Very soon, we hope to have the entire seafaring community on the SeaLog platform. Having such a large part of the seafaring community engaged on our platform allows us to offer a host of other services to the seafarer. These services range from remittances to insurance to credit. This is also why we allow for third parties to build applications on top of our platform, leveraging the large user base we already have. Now imagine the value we could create through this approach. In Sealock, we're connecting stakeholders seamlessly in one shared platform. Thank you for listening to me today. Hello, friends. I'm Saurish Nandi, co-founder and CEO of C-Miles. C-Miles is an incentivization platform that significantly improves the work performance of labor. Every organization has two types of employees, a star employee, who is usually proactive and diligent, and an average employee, who does the basic minimum of what is asked of him, mostly, and usually demotivated. Won't it be great if we take all the poorly and average performing employees and turn them into star employees? That's where we come in. There is a significant world labor workforce. When we talk about the maritime sector alone, there are people working in shipyards, boats, and to support these assets, there are also people working on shore. Overall, we are talking about 25 million employees. The market we are focusing on is a big market, but let's now transition and talk about the problem in hand. A ship is a high value asset. Each ship can cost upwards of $100 million. A group of 20 employees, or as they commonly refer to in shipping as seafarers, handle this expensive asset. Also, there are more than 100 jobs which the seafarers carry out during their tenure. Have a look at the screen for a second. The image on the left-hand side of the screen shows a bilge area on the ship being very well maintained. While on the right-hand side, it's an image of a poorly maintained bilge. Let's take another example. The left-hand side image shows a ship deck well maintained and also having proper markings. While on the right-hand side image, it shows a poorly maintained deck with no markings. Now, why am I dwelling on these jobs? Our studies done in collaboration with industry players suggest that jobs well done on a ship can save shipping companies close to 10% of the annual operating costs. So there's a the potential to save up to $100,000 on one ship annually. If you do the maths, this equates to huge savings for any shipping company. Well, now the ship owners have an opportunity to achieve these savings with our first product, which is called CMIS. At CMILES, we measure, incentivize, and transform your average employees into star employees. Let me show how it works in detail. Seafarers' performance are generally measured on a set of key performance indicators, or in short, KPIs. Some of the commonly used KPIs are listed on the screen. We have developed a state-of-the-art client portal for shipping companies. A closer look will indicate how easy it is for the shipping companies to navigate the portal and award sea miles to its seafarers for good performance and achieving their KPS. There is also an interesting broadcast messaging feature 
which allows clients to be in touch with the seafarers, pass on department specific or general information, conduct surveys and many other tasks. A seafarer has simply to log into his SeaMiles app and the miles allocated to him by the shipping company will reflect on the home screen. They can use the miles earned for buying flight tickets, book hotels, and even their family can use the miles for buying gift vouchers, doing grocery shopping, etc. At SeaMiles, we have carried out an extensive demographic research, have sailed on ships, have interacted with seafarers from various countries and from various regions within those countries. We have spoken to the family of seafarers, and based on the feedback, we have curated a list of merchants specific to their needs. On this screen, you will see a list of merchants which are onboarded on our platform already. These merchants range from convenience stores, ride hailing services, utilities, to online shopping, lifestyle brands, and many more. Now you might think, why not give cash instead to them? Well, the current employee reward structure in the companies at the moment are quite broken. Any incentives or bonus usually comes at the end of the year. If we take an analogy of ourselves going to the gym, won't it be great if we can see tangible results at the end of every day or every week? It will definitely keep us motivated to go to the gym more often. For a company to expense out cash at the end of every month is very unseemly. It's much easier for the company to give out rewards and at the end of each month, the employees will definitely be motivated to put a little bit more extra. Let's talk a little bit about traction for SeaMiles. We are onboarding seafarers from one of the largest shipping companies in Singapore, and we are also in talks with one of the biggest ship owners in India. We are in advanced talks with ship managers worldwide, and we have already formed alliances with crewing agencies in Sri Lanka and in Philippines. Similarly, we are in collaboration with marine associations, welfare organizations, and various maritime vendors. When we add up the seafarers from all the various companies we are in talks with, the total number of seafarers we plan to onboard on our platform is close to 75,000. Although we have started with maritime, we would be scaling parallelly into oil and gas industry as oil miles and logistics and trucking industry as road miles. In the next five years, we plan to onboard at least 7 million employees on our platform. So for our revenues, we'll have subscription fees per month from the 7 million people, which is great recurring source of revenue for us. In addition to this, we will earn from the 7 million people transacting on our platform due to the commission sharing arrangements with merchants and affiliates. So come and join us in our movement for transforming the world workforce, CMILES, making your company strong, one employee at a time. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alina Hoon, Program Manager at Techstar Singapore. We have come to the end of our virtual demo day and I bring to you the nine companies in our inaugural class of the Eastern Pacific Accelerator powered by Techstars. If you have any questions, please contact me here at my email address and thank you for watching our virtual demo day.